There is a phenomenal amount of talent in Derby. What drives us forward is the creative passion, the engagement, the desire to do more and to be first and to innovate and to challenge all the time. And that's something which I think our sector does more than other sectors. And as far as I'm concerned, all problems can be solved when you work with the creative industries. So we're just starting from that point. Fantastic. Now, obviously, that's normally where all of you in the crowd would be in rapturous applause, but sadly, you're not here right now. Um, that's a massive thank you, first of all, to Hot House, our band, tonight. Yes, indeed, another round of applause. There they are. Resplendent, as we can see in those outfits. <laughs> Slightly flammable, so we don't have any naked flames tonight, but other than that, we're all good. That's John Eno, Stuart McCrone and Will Turner, and we'll be hearing more from those later. This is the third year that we're hosting these awards. And as always, we're celebrating the great and the good in the creative and digital sectors in Derby and Derbyshire. I'm Adam Buss. I'm the CEO of Quad, and I'll be hosting alongside... Um, I'm Hannah York, Mainframe's Marketing Manager. And I'm Charlene Sharp, Mainframe Events Manager. So it kind of goes without saying it's been... Uh, I'm not even going to use the word because it's been used too many times, but the UP word, you know what I'm going to say. Unprecedented. Uh, oh, oh, outrageous. <laughs> but it has certainly been. And it's been an incredibly challenging year for a number of reasons. But I think what has happened during this year is there's been a reaffirmation of the importance of the creative industries. Many of the challenges that we've faced, we've seen creative industries find different ways of adapting and shifting and actually setting the bar for what we need to do moving forward. A, a publication came out actually very recently. This is Marketing Derby's brilliant um, Innovate magazine. If you haven't already got a copy of this issue, I urge you to get it because pretty much from cover to back cover, there are references to the cultural and creative industries in Derby and Derbyshire. And it shows just how important agencies like Marketing Derby, who do a brilliant job all year round in, in terms of inward investment, and Derby City Council, one of our key partners, who are now very firmly looking at culture and creative industries as a key part of the future regeneration of Derby City Centre. So none of this would happen without you. And ultimately, these awards are about you, the community. And we are a community. And, you know, it has to be said, it is quite sad that people aren't here, you know. But we're not going to have that kind of low, uh, beat, downbeat attitude. We're going to be positive throughout. And what this is about is celebrating the brilliant creative talent that we have right here in Derby. But before we get on to that, um, we've, got some, uh, we've got some presents, haven't we? We have, some yeah. gifts. <gasps> Ooh, open. yeah. We've got a bit of a festive theme, obviously. We would have been doing this in April normally, but doing it now gives us the opportunity to have a bit of a, a festive theme. So these are fantastic um, boxes, which you can get from Colleague Box. <laughs> And if you were shortlisted, um, uh, and indeed our judges have also been sent these boxes, so you should have been good and <laughs> saved your box opening until right now. If you've already opened those, and we know at least one person, won't say who it is, <laughs> you know who you are, you've already opened your box. If you haven't, if you could unbox now in a very YouTube-friendly way and see what we've got inside. <laughs> Ooh, this is so exciting. Oh, first oh, of all. Already. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> ideal. Lanyard, uh, please do put your lanyards on if you have those, if you can find those. Uh, fantastic flyer for the Creative Mornings. If you haven't engaged with the Creative Mornings programme, please do. There's more information on this flyer. And then lots of stuff for later. There's some fantastic chocolate, small yeah, bottle of Prosecco. You got that already. Yes. Found that. <laughs> Displaying it. What, no straw? Uh, some very interesting popcorn. Uh, and, and these are a fabulous way 
for you as businesses to um, reward your colleagues and find a different way of connecting with them. So you can find out more about Colleague Box online and indeed in that issue of Innovate magazine from Marketing Derby. And now Hannah's going to talk a little bit about why we're here and the things that we do collectively. So none of us would be here if it wasn't for the big house. The big house is an amazing collaboration uh, that stretches across both Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire and encompasses seven organisations that are here specifically to support you, digital and creative people. Um, through the big house, you can do amazing things. You can access support, grants, mentoring, and of course, events like this. Uh, and the best news is that it's all for free. So it's good. You yep. should get, if you're not already involved, I can't believe you won't have heard about it from me because I talk about it all the time. But go and have a look. Go and have a look at the Big House website. Um, sign up, get involved. And then I think I have, uh, talking of getting involved, um, I want to encourage. Nice segue. Thank you. By <laughs> like the way, you did that. Oh, slick. Um, talking of getting involved, there are hopefully plenty of you uh, watching from home on YouTube. So thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, but we want to make sure that you really feel a part of the evening. So please do use the chat that's on there. If you are on Twitter, uh, Instagram, any of our social channels, you can find us at Mainframe Derby. And we'd love you to use the hashtag Mainframe. Uh, so again, you'll have seen that on lots of our posts recently. So if you can uh, use the hashtag, we will be sharing some of your posts later. So we'd love to engage with you that way. So please do use it. Lovely. Thanks, Hannah. And we really do, as you've heard, value our mainframe community and look forward to all the submissions that we receive for the awards each year. Um, and with that, every year we're always achieving more and more, which is fantastic. And also, we really do appreciate our judges who have had the difficult task to go through the submissions and whistle it down to their chosen winner and runners-up. So our judges for this year are Anna Diva, Head of the Family Arts Campaign at the Albany, Annabelle Franks, Strategy Advisor and Creative Quarter Board Mem Advisor. Tina Hill, Senior Manager at the Digital Culture Network for the Arts Council England. Brian Martin Walsh, OBE Chair for here at Quad. Uh, Michael Whedon, uh, Chair of FSB's Retail and High Street Policy Unit. Julie Shepherd, Editor for Radio One, One Extra at the BBC. Vanessa Simpson, Digital Curriculum Manager at Derby College. Simon Carnell, Head of Community at Derby County Community Trust, and Simon Kirk, Inward Investment Executive at Marketing Derby. You'll hear more from them later on in the evening. I think it's now over to you, Adam. Thank you. Right, now we get into the awards. But before we do that, I just want to set a bit of context about why the creative industries are so important. Now, in the UK economy, the creative industries are, are seen to, to make around about £112 billion for the UK economy. To put that in some context, that is the equivalent to the automotive, the aerospace, the life sciences and the oil and gas industries combined in terms of the revenues that are generated in the UK. We employ over 2 million people in the creative industries sector throughout the country. And as I said before, many of the challenges that we face moving forward can be fixed, or not, not fixed, but at least adapted and amended to by working with the creative industries. And there's never been a more important time and these awards are a reflection of that great talent, but it's also a way for us to celebrate Derby in that context. So many of the people that are watching online will be from outside of Derby, and many of our judges are from all over the country. And again, every year we bring those judges in, and they reflect on how exciting and interesting the talent that they see in and around Derby is. Now, our first award. Our first award of the evening is the Family Participation Award. Now this is a new award for this year and it's awarded to the person or company who help local families participate in digital and creative activities or create products or services aimed at getting more families in our region involved in arts and culture. And our shortlisted entries are Sarah Bulmer from Derby Days Out, Grace Osborne from Daydar and Katie Lavis from Little Stark Gift Cards. Now we go to our first judge of tonight, Anna Diva, the head of the Family Arts Campaign at the Albany. Hello Anna. It's like, hello Luxembourg. <laughs> oh, I think we're having some audio issues here. Anna. We'll... Great, is that? Great. Is that oh, there we go. <laughs> We've got you. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Anna. 
Well, good. Well, thank you so much, Adam. I just wanted to just kick off really with a huge thank you to all, to all the team um, who've made tonight's awards possible and made this such an exciting event to be a, a part of. It's brilliant. Um, so I was asked this year to judge the Family Participation Award. Um, and just to put into context, really, as, as everyone knows, engaging families and doing it really well is no easy task and it takes real creativity, empathy and a great deal of persistence and dedication and imagination to bring joyful experiences not just to families, not just children but their, their parents and carers and the whole family. And we had some brilliant entries this year and it's such a hard task. Um, because it's so clear how much imaginative and ambitious work is, is going on and is taking place in Derby. So well done to everyone who, who applied. But of course, there can only be one winner. Um, and the winner that we selected showed how creativity really is for, for everyone. Um, and they ensured that access and inclusion are a core part of what they do and through all the activities they put together for families. And we loved that this particular, this winner showed how engagement can also create connections and it built partnerships across arts and non-arts groups across the community. So we were really delighted with them. So, without further ado, probably need some sort of virtual drum, drum roll, um, but delighted to announce that the winner of the Family Participation Awards is Ada and Grace Osborne. Um, thank you, thank you so much um, on behalf of all of the data team. Um, I know we don't have very long to make a speak and there's loads of people to thank. Um, so first of all, congratulations to the other nominees um, and thank you on behalf of all of the data team to Stephen Munn, who um, Full Moon Friday was his vision and obviously he led Festo for many years. Um, uh, thank you to all of the first day partners and funders uh, for 2019 and um, all of the staff and volunteers uh, from the programming technical back to office and operations teams, uh, Jen Sumner who led um, the One Moon Parades, uh, Hubble Theatre, the Splash Consortium and all of the artists from that evening. Um, yeah, we, we had an amazing time and we're really hoping that we'll um, be back for first day 2021 in the same capacity and for more cultural family events in the city. Um, thank you. Thank you so much again and thanks to Main Brown for organising. Cheers. Woo! Woo! Fantastic. We're off. We started. Now, I did say to our technical crew who are in the house now that at no point would I criticise them for any technical mistakes. But I'm not going to do that, of course. <laughs> but the point I want to make is, even though tonight hopefully will look relatively simple on your screens in front of you, it's an incredibly complex task for us. So do please bear with us if there are some small delays in terms of people coming on with the audio and stuff, because it's, uh, we, we do, it, it's a challenging set of circumstances. But I'm sure you're all enjoying yourselves already uh, and, and fabulous f music uh, coming from the guys. But, it, I mean, it's got to be said, these, these suits that you've bought, today guys is that, is that is that specifically for us or are you rolling those out everywhere no specifically for you in fact i'm disappointed Where, where's yours <laughs> <laughs> well will as you were seen from the opening video i'm wearing exactly the same clothes as i wore last year right, okay. so um yeah i've let the side down i've next let the year. side down next year thank you will now our next award is the make and trade award this is another new award for this year derby and derbyshire is a hive of wonderful people who craft and produce and this award will recognise someone continuing on this proud tradition, selling on a small scale and making locally. Shortlisted are Kirsty Adamson from Kirsty Adamson Arts, Paul Adamson from Paul Adamson Woodland Craft, and Aaron Gent from Aromant. Congratulations on being shortlisted, all of you. Now, unfortunately, our uh, judge for this uh, category, Annabelle Frank, strategy advisor for Creative uh, Quarter Board, can't be with us this evening, but she did record this video. Over to you, Annabelle. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm really honoured to have been asked to judge this um, fantastic category, which is called Make and Trade. And it's a celebration of Derbyshire's wonderful 
craftspeople and particularly people who've um, made a business out of their craft um, and produce wonderful works. Um, this award is particularly recognising someone who's continued this proud tradition, um, been selling on a small scale and, and making locally. So it's an absolute joy to announce that the winner of this category is Paul Adamson and his business is called Woodland Craft and I absolutely loved um, what Paul produces. Um, he has, he makes incredible product um, demonstrating true craftsmanship and what's particularly special is his connection to the local environment and its history. Um, he has a great philosophy of skill sharing which I think is so important and encouraging people to experience all aspects of the woodland and I don't doubt he's been making the most of that over the last few months and I think uh, in these times it's wonderful to celebrate some fantastic local craftsmanship and a proposition that's sustainable from every angle so well done Paul. Uh, hi everybody, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I wasn't expecting to win, so I haven't actually really prepared much. Um, but I'm really pleased and uh, surprised, obviously. Um, I'm, I'm hugely passionate about passing on uh, the skills of wood carving to other people. And so far it's been a very general thing online and um, lo local teaching as well, um, which I've absolutely loved doing. Um, but with the lockdown, that's kind of all stopped. So. Um, I've been making a lot more and selling online and I'm really, really grateful to the people that have um, enjoyed my work and uh, what else can I say? Uh, uh, thanks a lot and I'm just going to keep on and um, yeah, if you want to buy a spoon, you know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. Um, it's very fitting as well that our fabulous awards are crafted in wood by the, uh, the company to make. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, um, yeah, once again, Paul showing how the mixture of traditional crafts and digital media can work together. Now, our next uh, award is for the Digital Disruptor, and this is our final new award for this year. And the judge was looking for an individual or company who was doing something different and making it work, whether it was their business or product that challenged the established order within the market, winning recognition and customers. Our shortlist is Louise West from Louise West Lace Design, Holly Dolby from Honest Communication, and Phil Barley, Theatre Digs Booker. And we go live to our third judge this evening, Tina Hill, who is the Senior Manager, Digital Culture Network, from the Arts Council of England. Tina! Oh. <laughs> it's your Eurovision moment. <laughs> oh, okay. So we're, we're having a bit of trouble connecting with Tina. In which case, I will reveal the winner. Slightly less exciting. And obviously, I haven't uh, been through the judging process, so I don't have the full detail, but we'll pass that on to you as the winner. But just to say, and we can actually have a drum roll now to make it more exciting. The winner is Louise West. Louise West Lace Design. Louise, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the award. It's a fantastic achievement to win it uh, this year. I won two awards last year, so a, a huge thanks again to everybody at Mainframe and at the Quad. And also thanks to everybody supporting me at Connect Derby, at Frygate Studios, all my students, uh, suppliers that supply me, and all my customers, of course. The lace makers have been fantastic this year through the lot lockdowns uh, continuing to keep supporting me as I'm supporting them digitally. Thank you very much. Yeah, Louise is racking up the awards, as she said. She also won the Best Digital Creative Innovation and the New Product to Market Award at last year's Mainframe Awards. So if you want to uh, uh, get a few lessons in how to win an award, go and see Louise. Now on to our fourth award. <laughs> last year's winner was Lynn Hollingsworth. 
Now, this is our Mainframe Unsung Hero Award. This is awarded to the unsung hero in the office, um, or potentially working from home. This unsung hero is usually someone who flies under the radar, but is actually a digital or creative workhorse. Who nominated them, and who did our judge pick? Well, our shortlist is Cameron Hussain from Repeat Digital, nominated by Molly Sneath. Amy Jowett from Repeat Digital, also nominated by Molly Sneath. Chris Wright from Silver Birch Creative, nominated by Selena Creedham. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. This is very much a crucial role in every organisation. Now, unfortunately, Brian Martin Walsh OBE, who's the chair here at Quad, is unable to join us live tonight, but he did record this message. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Walsh, and I'm chair of Quad. I hope you enjoyed this evening's celebrations with Mainframe, and I'm sorry I can't be with you uh, myself. Uh, I'm sure all of you as well are very disappointed that Quad won't be able to open until after Christmas, but please be assured that we will do our very best to be up and running as soon as possible in the new year. I have the pleasure of uh, judging the Unsung Hero category for Mainframe Awards. And I'm pleased to announce, after a very strong selection, uh, that Cameron Hussein was supported. Uh, what came across very strongly to me was his commitment to work, his very strong support from his uh, fellow team members, and overall a very can-do approach, which is very commendable and worthy of an award. So well done, Cameron. Fantastic. Cameron, over to you. Um, you've got you've got the difficult job of talking about an award you've won against one of your your colleagues as well, which is very tricky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like I said, thank you to everyone. Uh, thank you to Molly uh, for nominating us, uh, me and Amy. And it's been, it's been I had no idea that this was going to happen. Um, so I want to say thank you to everyone. I repeat this to thank you to Amy as well and everyone who got uh, nominated. Um, quite honoured to for this. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> I've got to say as well, there's some, there's some fantastic fashions coming out already. The bow tie there, Cameron, was, was spot on. So I'm sure there's going to be more of that. Um, and that's one of the challenges, isn't it, actually, with kind of the lockdown process. I've, have you guys found this, that particularly in our world, obviously we work with a lot of amazing creatives in and around the world. So I've been in a lot of Zoom meetings where the backgrounds and the interior design has been incredible, whereas mine is effectively magnolia. So is that just my challenge or, is it, or have you all got... In, it's just what you've got amazing interior design. Of course. Yeah, well, fine, fine. See, I'm not going to get any support tonight, am I? Um, our next award, our fifth award of the night, is the Best Digital Creative Startup. This is awarded to the company or organisation that has launched within the last three years and has a strong and loyal following already, and including that, a customer base and an audience. Previous winners of this award in 2019, iScout, and in 2018, Playtonic Games. Now shortlisted this year are Claire Zwozny Beswick from Crazy Best, Mark Avril and Ash Stanley from Avid Media, and Erica Horn from CAD for Fashion. And we go live to our fifth judge this evening, Michael Whedon, Chair of FS FSB's Retail and High Street Policy Unit. Apologies for stumbling on that, Michael. Michael, fantastic outfit. Ooh, round of applause. <laughs> Somebody said awards. Somebody said I mean, what else could I do? <laughs> this was very difficult, was to, very judge. difficult to judge. Some really strong, Some really contenders. strong contenders. The one that we came the down to in the down end, down end is a fresh, is a fresh different business. Different business. Uh, more importantly, uh, more it enables, enables other, businesses other businesses to take advantages, to take advantages uh, in its uh, specialisation. In, in an industry in an which industry tends to be a late adopter of technological of reform, technology but it's, it's got a lot to got gain lot in terms of productivity and innovation. And, innovation. and this business and is also filling a gap in the education system, which shouldn't exist, but does. It's a tribute to the idea and the model that it is demonstrably engaging both 
individual designers and top high street names. And the winner of the award is Erica Horn, CAD for Fashion. Congratulations to Erica. I believe we have you on Zoom to say a few words. Erica, well done. Thank you. Uh, that's a bit of a surprise. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I don't really know what to say. I didn't really expect this because my business kind of isn't understood by a lot of people. Um, it kind of flies under the radar. It's not something people know a lot about. Um, I need to say a huge thank you to uh, all of my business advisors that I've had <laughs> over the last two years um, and also to um, Stephen Rose, who uh, uh, he's a freelancer who teaches for me, who is looking after things whilst I'm on maternity leave at the moment. And um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm really, really grateful for this opportunity to sort of make myself known and um, yeah. All right. Amazing. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> Brilliant. We're halfway through the awards now, and Erica's just raised a really important point, actually. A lot of businesses in their early years do struggle for that advice and that input, but there's a fantastic range of support mechanisms um, that are available through the Big House, uh, uh, Big House Group. Which you can find out more information on the Big House website. Um, you can get a link there via the mainframe website if you need to. But there is that support out there. But I think one of the other things to recognise is that the community itself, the mainframe community, all of the award winners here, all of the people that come to the Creative Mornings events and the other events that we host, there's a real open sense of idea sharing and the opportunity for collaborations. So if you haven't already, please do come to those events, whether they're virtual at the moment or in person, hopefully in the not too distant future. But a huge congratulations to all our winners so far and indeed the runners-up and a massive thanks to all our judges for taking the time out to look through the various shortlisted uh, uh, award uh, nominees. We're seeing some fantastic messages coming in and we're going to read some of those out very soon. And we still have the following awards to announce. We've still got the Emerging Digital Creative Star. We've still got the Digital uh, Creative Upscaler. We've still got the Creativity for Good Award. We've still got the Putting Derby in Derbyshire on the Map Award. And finally, we'll finish off with the Digital Creative Ambassador of the Year Award. But first, you've heard them in short bursts. I think it's time we heard a, a proper set from the Hot House I think crew. you're right there, Adam. I think. You, uh, it's way overdue, to be honest. It is well, it's well overdue. Too much waffling, not enough music. Over to you, Hot House. Sometimes I go out by myself and I look across the water And I think of all the things of what you're doing In my head I paint a picture Since I've come on home, well my body's been a mess And I miss your ginger hair and the way you like to dress Won't you come on over? Stop making a fool out of me Why don't you come on over, Valerie 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 Did you have to go to jail? Put your house on up for sale Did you get a good lawyer? Did you have to pay that fine? You were dodging all the time, are you still dizzy? Since I've come on home, well my body's been a mess And I miss your ginger hair and the way you like to dress Won't you come on over, stop making a fool out of me Why don't you come on over back? Valerie, Valerie, Valerie. 
love coming home Well, my body's been a mess I miss your ginger hair And the way you like to dress Won't you come on over Stop making a fool out of me Why don't you come on over Valerie 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 Valerie, why don't you come on over, Valerie? So thank you guys for listening. We are the Hot House Trio, as you can see we're in our funky suits. So please check us out on all the social medias. Uh, that's John, Stu and Will. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for lessons for your partner or for your children, then we are running online lessons. The music is the greatest thing to do uh, in this. Yeah, it's a great Christmas present for all of your family. If you'd like some online music lessons with the team. And also, if you like the music you're hearing, please check us out on Spotify under my name, Will Pearson. Or we also have the Hot House Screaming Kicks Big Band on, on the Spotify page. So please check out our music. Here we go. Christmas. Oh, I can't wait to see those faces. I'm driving home for Christmas, yeah. Well, I'm moving down that line. And it's been so long, but I will be there to sing this song. To pass the time away, driving in my car, driving home. Christmas Driving home for Christmas Top to toe in tailbacks Oh, I got red lights all around Soon there'll be a freeway, yeah we'll Get my feet on holy ground So I sing for you Though you can hear me when I get through A feeling in me Driving in my car Driving home for Christmas I'm driving home for Christmas With a thousand memories I take a look at the driver next to me He's just the same just the same So I sing for you Though you can hear me when I get through I'm feeling in me I'm driving in my car I'm driving home for Christmas I'm driving home for Christmas With a thousand memories Take a look at the driver next to me And he's just the same Just the same Oh, driving home for Christmas I'm driving home for Christmas Driving home for Christmas Driving home for Christmas So I think, oh, I just think we perhaps we'll give you another little round of applause because that was amazing. It's so nice to listen to live music. Sorry that you're not live at your end, but it's so <laughs> cool. Um, another round of applause. Woo! <laughs> Woo! 
So I am super pleased to see that people have been posting on the socials um, and hey, hey. Through. that was me earlier. <laughs> yeah. um, but do keep uh, using the hashtag uh, at Mainframe. Obviously, it's coming up on our big board here. Keep getting involved. Keep telling us what you I think. Th well, so I think there is a bit of a debate going on. So the colleague boxes have gone down really well tonight. And uh, Rob Twells thought they were a lovely gesture. Uh, but there's been a, a debate online about who the early opener could be. Well, <laughs> oh. with Selena Creedon's money on it being, I won't bait them out right now. But who, 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 who was could the early it be? Opener? Who could it be? Um, um, so yeah, there we are. Silly is on there. <laughs> Look, uh, you'll always be my unsung hero and winner. And I see you on the big screen. I think I actually could do is this at my home. Like, you know, I. In your short slice, this is amazing. Oh. I can just, well, just tweets about you, Charlie. Just tweets. Well, it can <laughs> tweets about me, but you know, I can just see everything. It's great. Yeah. Oh, no, keep posting on there, folks. Uh, the I'm going to be sharing the social media wall um, after the event, so we'll get to keep a record of all your comments and see all the lovely things that you're saying um, about the winners and the chat between Maybe yourselves. So thank you ever so much, Tim. In our final category there. for ambassador of the year. So yeah, uh, a few more categories to go. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, thank oh. you, gang. Keep tweeting, keep posting. Um, it's on all the socials uh, at Mainframe Derby, and the hashtag is Mainframe. So, I think we'll is that it? We'll carry on with the actual awards. Yeah. Do it. Uh, thank you again to uh, Hot House. Hot House, um, starting Christmas early, it's not even December. <laughs> is that controversial? What are your feelings? No, not, not this year. Oh, we, no. we started in September, if I'm honest. <laughs> Yeah, are you, are you straight on the pigs in blankets now, every meal? Yeah, mince pies, mug of wine a lot. <laughs> oh, wait, Tesco no. meal deal with a Christmas sandwich <laughs> every single day since you, October, I, I think. I've got to admit, that is a little bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, the Christmas sandwich. It is great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, not just, I mean, all of them, to be honest. Uh, if, if I can find all of the Christmas sandwiches yeah. in the land. Cranberry sauce, and put it in any, any sandwich, it's a winner, makes it Christmassy. I agree, I, I agree, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian slip. Yeah, there's a Freudian slip. Uh, and, and this is exactly why people have changed it. Tri okay, right, stop. <laughs> Start again, Adam. This is exactly why people have tuned in tonight to hear the discussion about the festive period. Of course. Uh, because they've not heard enough of that in the last few weeks, have they? So mm -hmm. we're keeping that going. Thank you, Hot House, and we will hear more, of, more from them later. Now, our sixth award for the evening is the Emerging Digital and Creative Star Under 25. This award recognises an individual under the age of 25 who's made an impact on the digital and creative landscape in Derby and Derbyshire. The region's success in the digital arena depends on talent staying in our region and the judge will look to reward the best and brightest young people for their efforts. Previous winners of this award include in 2018 Georgia Vickers from Fluid Ideas and in 2019 Elliot Davidson from Contrast Digital Limited. And our shortlisted entries this year are Molly Sneath from Repeat Digital, nominated by Freddie Heppel. Jack Griffiths from Derby County Community Trust, nominated by Megan Patrick. And Jessica Frierson from Future Proof Films, nominated by Rob Dawes. And we go live to our next judge this evening which is Julie Shepherd, the editor at Radio 1 Extra for the BBC. Julie, it's good to see you again. How are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. How are you? How are you? Good, looking resplendent again. Thank you for that. Our judges are, are putting us to shame so far. Well, this is the first time I've been to an award ceremony in my slippers. So, <laughs> below the desk, letting you down a bit. Good honesty. Uh, but, so, this has been a fantastic category to judge. There are so many brilliant young people nominated and it's obvious they've all worked really hard to develop their skills and to make opportunities for themselves. So well done to everyone in this category. On to the winner. So it's really clear that their creative eye talent and their pitching success have made a huge impact on their company and even led them to launch a new business. So the winner for this award is Jessica Frierson of Future Proof Films, who is nominated for Rob Dawes. And this is a true apprenticeship success story of someone who was determined to continue in the face of adversity. And I can't wait to see what she achieves in the future. So well done, Jessica. <laughs> Yeah.
Jessica, I don't um, know if this is the first like award you've won, but is, is this the first time you had to give us a, a congratulation speech? Uh, yeah, I was uh, nominated for Apprentice of the Year last year, but got shorted by that. But uh, I'd like to say thank you for Rob for nominating me and everyone at Future Proof for supporting me in my growth. And I don't really know what to say. <laughs> thank you. Well done. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs>under 25 now the three nominees there particularly have more opportunities than the rest of us shall we say to win awards in the future uh, for a very long time and some incredible creative talent and quite often and that's one of the things we're trying to do with the mainframe awards is find ways of getting under the hood of the creative industries finding ways of celebrating those different elements of the creative industries which may not otherwise be represented in other awards nationally or regionally now we recognize we're not as big as the oscars or anything like that or the baftas but ultimately, our job here is to find a way through Mainframe to not only bring the community together, but to celebrate it outwards. And as I said, tonight is a further opportunity for that. Just to give you a little bit of a, a sneak preview uh, for those of you um, who have won the awards, this is the award that will come out to you. It's a very solid construction. It will look very good on your mantelpiece. And for people like Louise West, uh, they will have previous awards which have a slightly different colour at the top. So every year we're going to change this colourway. So the ideal thing, obviously, is to try and get one every year and have a complete swatch. Tell we're in a, in a Creative Industries Awards when you talk about swatches. Anyway, our next award is the Best Digital and Creative Upscaler. Last year, this award was known as Digital Creative and Exceptional Growth. And in 2019, the winner was Andrew Warner from Anchor and Crew. The chosen winner will be an entrepreneur whose business has seen rapid growth and expansion and have been trading for more than three years. But who will win? Our shortlist this year is... Liam Nelson and Rob Twells from Frogspark. Keith Cox from Block Digital. And Joe Brammer from Bulkhead Interactive. Congratulations to all of you for being shortlisted. Now, unfortunately, Vanessa Simpson, the Digital Curriculum Manager at Derby College, cannot be with us this evening, but she did record this message. Simpson, and I'm the Digital Curriculum Manager at Derby College. I do hope that you are enjoying tonight's event so far. Sorry I can't be with you online, but I'm sure you're in safe hands with the mainframe team. I was asked to be a judge for the Best Digital and Creative Upscaler Award. Um, it gave me the opportunity to read about all of the amazing entrepreneurs and businesses that have grown within the Derby area. Now, like any other competition, there can only be one winner. So it gives me great pleasure to award the Best Digital and Creative Upscaler Award to Frogspark. So congratulations to Frogspark. Since the inception of Frogspark, you've worked with a large client base, both locally and nationally, which has helped you to see revenue growth year on year. What stood out for me was the community ethic and the passion to help others succeed in terms of time spent with university students, but also looking at planning events that will help raise the profile of other digital and creative businesses within the Derby community. So congratulations once again to Frog Spark on your award. I wish everybody success for 2021 and enjoy the rest of your evening. Over to you, Rob, to say a few words. We can hear you. Oh, okay. I didn't know if anyone could hear me or not. That was all. Uh, yeah, we've got you, Rob. No worries. No, sorry, that's my dog. no I genuinely didn't uh, anticipate that at all. Um, thank you very much. I am just, yeah, I'm just very proud that we've got through the year, the way the year's been. The team's worked really, really hard, um, especially in a good year last year when we actually entered this award. Uh, this year, seen some good growth, and hopefully into next year, we can capitalise on that and gather some momentum going into the new year, and yeah. Good way to end of the year. Brilliant. Thank you, Rob. Congratulations. Again, a fantastic category and a lot of learnings to be taken from all the businesses that are shortlisted there. Frogspark, 
Block Digital and Bulkhead Interactive. If you don't know those three companies, please do search them out. Um, again, there's references, I think, to all three in the latest Marketing Derby magazine. But some of the work that all three are delivering is, is not only uh, having an impact regionally, but it's having an impact internationally. Um, the work of, of Block and Bulkhead is fantastic, as is that of Frog Spark, and a massive well done to Rob Twells, who it's fair to say is one of our most active members of the mainframe community, isn't he? Yeah, Anna absolutely. Yeah. So, we move on to our next award. Now, this is one that's really close to our hearts, and it's an award. When we first started talking about the Mainframe Creative Industries Awards, we always wanted something which summed up that slightly hidden bit of the creative industries, which is where the creative industries interact with wider parts of our society and the challenges that we face. And I think, as I said last year, I believe passionately that the creative industries, arts and culture, can be at the heart of solving some of our biggest challenges, not only locally and regionally, but globally. Um, and the more we work together, the more we will succeed. This award is the Creativity for Good Award. Now, the judge wanted to see how the winner was able to demonstrate how their product, project or organisation has contributed to the betterment of lives through creative means, both locally and further afield. Previous winners include in 2018, Clean App by Simon Rice, and in 2019, Mayor Perkins, Animation and Illustration. The shortlist this year was Jen Sumner from Hubbub Theatre, Jess Boyle from Dadar, and Jane Hardstaff from Common Threads. Unfortunately, Simon Carnell, the head of, Derby, uh, head of community at Derby County Community Trust, cannot be with us this evening, but he has recorded this message for us. Here to uh, talk to you about the category Creativity for Good, where um, I was absolutely uh, bowled away with the quality of applications, you know, the, the dedication to, to their projects to try to create these amazing opportunities and outcomes for all the participants within the program. And, you know, when I, when I did the judging um, earlier in the year, it took me quite a while to, to, to narrow it down because there was so little between almost all of the applications. But as ever with these things, you know, there can only be one winner. But I did want to uh, give a special mention to two runners up, if, if, if that's okay. So um, first runner up was uh, Dadar, you know, the, the work that they were doing around Steam and working with Rolls Royce, it was, you know, brilliant to see that collaboration and brilliant to see that the outcomes of, of their work. So, you know, uh, highly regarded by me and, 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 and you know, congratulations on, on a brilliant program. Second runner up was Common Threads, uh, again, an unbelievable program which um, you know I really enjoyed reading about I thought the recovery quilt that's on display uh, at the museum is just a, an outstanding example of you know collaboration and how participants can contribute to something that's you know a, a brilliant piece of work that's there for for people to see uh, share and, and enjoy which was brilliant but as I said that, that there can only be um, one winner and, and, and in this category the winner is Hubbub Theatre um, so congratulations to them. I just, through, I just thought that through, um, you know, reading uh, uh, about them, seeing the program, you know, the, the importance of creativity and, and kindness and the impact that they were having on, on, on their participants, it, it was brilliant. I've also you know, had the pleasure of seeing their work firsthand, so I know how passionate the, 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 their staff are, their volunteers are, and, you know, how much the the participants get out of it so I was, I was you know delighted to to see that and I think that whole you know creating accessible opportunities and, and, and giving um, the participants the, the voice and the platform that they had to, to show what they could do was unbelievable so uh, delighted for Hubble Theatre and you know thank them for the brilliant work that they're doing. Jen, you're also the person that has the first pet on screen in the award, so well done. <laughs> Introduce your pet. This is Mabel, and she has come to live with me after my friend, who is a very lovely actress, passed away. So actually, once oh. the limelight as well, it runs through the <laughs> it runs through the family. <laughs> um, this is uh, absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I feel honoured. I know how much amazing work goes on 
in the city and how many fabulous organizations are working in the community and making a massive difference. I couldn't agree with Adam more about the role of the arts and the culture in, uh, in, in managing so many issues. We look at well-being, the, the environment, kindness to ourselves, to our community, to our planet. And um, yeah, it it's, it's really is an honor. Thank you. It's the first award we've had. and. Um, this is on behalf, I'm telling you, accept this on behalf of everybody that works with us. We're a massive collaborative effort. All of our learning disabled actors who also lead programs in the community, all of our participants and the schools we work with and our fabulous team who through this year have also been absolutely amazing. So thank you really. And yeah, let's keep, as we say in Hubble, keep it going <laughs> with kindness. Brilliant. Thanks. Again, another company to check out if you haven't already. Um, Hubbub Theatre do amazing performances in and around Derby and Derbyshire. You can normally find them performing uh, one way or another in Fest Day every year. Obviously, that's going to be challenging this year, but I'm sure there will be some involvement. So please do check out Hubbub when you can. Amazing performances. Um, I also just want to reflect quickly on, on Simon's involvement in this, actually. Simon from um, Derby County Community Trust. Simon was one of the first people I met when I moved to Derby um, because I was aware as an outsider coming into the city at the time that Derby County uh, Football Club plays such a fundamental role in the overall city itself. Um, in the normal scheme of things, 25,000 people will fill Pride Park um, every other Saturday, and that's 10% of the overall population of Derby. The impact of the football club as, as the ebb and flow of the professional football game happens can really impact on the overall psyche of the city as well. But I think what Simon's done and the team at Derby County Community Trust is to, is to take the football club and the essence of why football can be a power to bring people together in the same way that we look at arts and culture and creativity as a way to bring people together into wider communities on an ongoing basis. And increasingly, Derby County as an organisation and the Community Trust particularly are working with other third sector organisations, other charities, other arts organisations, other creative businesses. And the same happens cross sector in many forms in Derby. And I'm lucky enough to sit on re uh, representational boards across the country and the level of collaboration that happens in Derby City, which starts from Derby City Council and the University of Derby as key pillars within that, but in, involves small and medium-sized enterprises, as well as our huge employers, all seeking to make Derby a better place to live, is something I think doesn't happen on the same scale anywhere else. And I think moving forward, it's something that we're going to talk about even more, because more and more people are going to look at the model that we've created in Derby for those collaborations to see how that can be rolled out throughout the world. Because again, challenges that we face, the challenges we face on a, on a daily basis now around things like climate change, artificial intelligence, these are global issues, but we can find our individual local solutions which can then impact on the world. And Derby does that. It's always punched above its weight and it always will. That moves us, I think, nicely into our next award, which is putting Derby and Derby, I would say that though, wouldn't I? Because I'm <laughs> presenting it. Just congratulated myself there for, a, for an intro. Uh, which you know probably is the first one I've got right today, so I don't really think I deserve that. Congratulations! Um, oh, it's all right. Well, good. Woo! That wasn't that, now again. That felt like fishing. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, <laughs> slow clap from John on sax. I think that was deserved. Thank you for that, John. Anyway, our next award is putting Derby and Derbyshire on the map. Now, this award is one that's very close to our hearts, and the winner will be someone making us proud in how they are flying the flag for our region. Previous winners include, in 2018, Derby Days Out, and in 2019, Three Guru. Our shortlist for the Putting Derby and Derbyshire on the Map Award are Sarah Lay from Reckless Yes, Carl Shaw from Mr Shaw Limited, and Keith Cox from Block Digital. And we go live to our ninth judge this evening, Simon Kirk, who is the Inward Investment Executive at Marketing Derby. Simon. Are you there, Luxembourg? <laughs> <laughs> Our marketplace. <laughs> you, Simon, tell us all about the uh, the nominees and, and, and who you selected for this award and why. Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, build on what Adam said at the start. It was a, it was a great uh, entry highlighting what that strongly creative and digital sector is to the, the economy. 
and breaking it down to a granular level in the East Midlands, it's worth over £4.3 billion to our, to our economy. And I'd also like to congratulate um, Derby Quad by, by having that strong arts and culture uh, that they produce down there. It, it helps to attract creative entrepreneurs and enterprises. So um, I love what you do there and, and keep it up. Uh, so going on to the uh, the finalists tonight, it was um, a very diverse range. I'd just like to congratulate uh, everybody that was in the final. Uh, from one man that's keeping dog on the house music map uh, to an independent record company, and that can't be a, an easy job. The beating hearts of uh, such a brutal industry, uh, and a business that's bringing Derby into the uh, digital revolution, the Industry 4.0. Uh, but I, I'm quite pleased to say that tonight's winner is uh, Block Digital and Deep Cox. Keith, you've been spoken about tonight, already been nominated for one other award. You're in the Marketing Derby magazine with a full interview. Tell us uh, what this means to you. It means it means a lot. I mean, myself and my business partner, Chris Hotham, we started Block 20 years ago from our bedrooms. Um, we've moved offices a few times, each time getting larger and larger. We've recently just moved our HQ into a larger office in Derby. I don't recommend doing that during a pandemic. It's not fun. Um, but we, we, you know, we are Derby in the heart and we always will be. We have grown and we've got satellite offices down in Bournemouth. We've got some in the US that's just growing and we've got a couple more due to go up in 21. But our HQ will always be um, Derby. Um, we're a Derby business, always will be, and we're proud to say so. So thanks for the, uh, the award. Really, really appreciate it. <laughs> Now, can you believe we're at the point with our final award? Already? Already. We're already there, possibly because I've been rushing through it too much. But <laughs> there's been an incredible amount of talent that we've seen so far in terms of the award winners, but as we've said already on numerous occasions, shortlisted. But there was also a number of other entries that just didn't quite make the shortlist, and it wasn't because they weren't good enough. It was just that the panels were so strong in terms of the organisations that, 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 that put themselves forward and were nominated. And I think... Derby is, is at the cusp of, um, without being too grandiose about it, but the potential for an even bigger evolution of our creative industries. I think there's going to be some exciting plans announced moving forward by Derby City Council in, in that area. Stay tuned for those. And certainly we here at Quad, thank you uh, to Simon for the kind words, we here at Quad are, are very much committed to being hopefully a kind of a spiritual home for those creative industries through activities like Mainframe and a welcoming space for anyone coming into the city for the first time. But what Keith said was absolutely vital. The more companies like Block Digital that grow and continue to grow but see Derby as their natural home will then foster greater uh, collaborations and partnerships with smaller organisations uh, moving forward and Derby will become an even greater place. So we're in a good place but we can keep improving. Now our final award is a big one and it's the only award that's voted actually by you, the community. It's the Digital Creative Ambassador of the Year. As I said, it's voted by you, the mainframe community, and the Digital Creative Ambassador will be a champion for Derby and Derbyshire. So as well as being an award, this is kind of an extra job you get. Uh, the other uh, previous winners will attest to that. And it's focused on how you make the city and a region a great place for digital and creative businesses to set up and thrive. And our shortlisted entries are Tim Elliott from Brave and Creative Leadership, John Wall from Quad, and Joe Brammer from Bulkhead Interactive. Now in 2000, 2018, our first recipient of this award was Jack Williams from Archer Hampson, and then following up that in 2019 was Drew Taylor Davis from Future Proof Films, who received the most public votes that year and held the title for a year and a bit because of the circumstances. And we have him on Zoom, I think, to talk about what he's done in that year, what the award meant to him, and he's also kindly agreed to announce our winner for 2020, Drew Taylor Davis. Are you there? Oh, wow. What a shirt, oh, Drew. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Over to you, Drew. Um, thank you. Uh, just to be clear, guys, when I did win last year, 
uh, and I said I want this year's awards to be more digital, I didn't mean like this. So if this was purely for me, thank you, but uh, I would like to celebrate together next time. Plus the popcorn shrimp was pretty good. But uh, yeah, digital or not, tonight's awards have been amazing. There's been so many great winners, so many great uh, runners up. Um, and the digital ambassador, uh, digital creative ambassador for Derby is no different because we've got, as you said, Joe Brammer, Tim Elliott, John Wall, uh, all incredible uh, contributors to the Derby digital creative landscape. And Adam, as you said at the start, you know, the creative industry is so, they, they mean so much to everybody. And it's so important for every region to have a strong uh, base. And I think these three guys, you know, flying the flag for the uh, digital creative landscape is fantastic. But as you said, uh, everybody's voted and the votes are in. So the next digital and creative ambassador of Derby is John Wall from Quad. So congratulations, John. Over to you. John, fantastic beard there for one. And also, <laughs> you're the first recipient of an award to have your family with you at the same time. I, I am, although I think my daughter is more preoccupied with her tablet than what's going on, <laughs> although she has been in music. So thank you for that. Um, th this um, completely unexpected. I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, thank you very much to everyone who voted. Um, you know, the, the creative industries are more than just businesses. It's about individuals, it's about communities and, and the work that I can do through Quad is about that social engagement with digital, um, which is what I'm really passionate about. So this is um, a very, very pleasant surprise. So thank you very much. I've, I've run out for a second, but I'm still going with, with some rum. So I'm just going to carry on with that. So thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Good choice, John. I think it's probably, as we uh, come to the conclusion of our awards, it's probably a good way for all of us to segue into the rest of the evening, which will obviously be in our own homes, but we can all have rum. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you. Well, we are, are pretty much at the end, um, so it only uh, uh, leaves me to kind of say a few thank yous, but also to start with, just to remind you of who our winners are uh, from these awards. So I'll just run through those for you to make some markers of the people that you want to catch up with after this, me after this meeting. That's underplaying it, isn't it? All the effort that's gone into it, I was about to call it a meeting. How dare I? Um, so the winners this year in 2020 were the Family Participation Award, Grace Osborne from Dadar, our Make and Trade Award, Paul Adamson from Woodland Craft, our Digital Disruptor Award, Louise West Lace Design, our Mainframe Unsung Hero Award, Cameron Hussain from Repeat Digital, our Best Digital and Creative Startup, Erica Horn, CAD for Fashion, our Emerging Digital and Creative Star Under 25, Jessica Frierson, our Best Digital Creative Upscaler, Liam Nelson and Rob Twells, our Creativity for Good Award winners, Hubbub Theatre, Jen Sumner, our Putting Derby in Derbyshire on the Map Award winner, Keith Cox from Block Digital, and finally our Digital Creative Ambassador of the Year Award, John Wall from Quad. Big round of applause from all the people here, and I'm sure all of you at home. <laughs> Wowza! And there you are, I can see you on screen. That's exciting. I want to say a huge thanks to all of our judges. I should be sat down, shouldn't I? I'm sorry. Come and sit. Come I'm messing, come and chill out <laughs> messing with the cameras. Uh, oh, messing yeah, with the cameras. Oh. I forgot that I was supposed to move. Yeah, yeah, I was fine. just being lazy That's and standing right. over there. <laughs> Apologies. Just can't get the staff, I don't know. <laughs> but we should say some huge thank yous. Um, I want to say a massive thanks to all of our judges tonight. Many of them gave brilliant speeches. Some of them recorded messages because they were otherwise engaged tonight. But a huge thank you to Anna Diva, to Annabelle Franks, to Tina Hill, to Brian Martin Walsh OBE, to Michael Whedon, to Julie Shepherd, Vanessa Simpson, Simon Carnell, Simon Kirk, and to all of you who voted in the public vote, a massive thanks to Drew Taylor Davis. Some of our partners that have made this event happen tonight, WDA Marketing, the brilliant team at Firecatcher, Sam and Tom, uh, Two Make, who created our amazing awards. If you need an award, those are the guys to make that. Colleague Box, the fantastic gifts. Again, a great way of, of rewarding colleagues. My colleagues here, Tech Squad, including Alex Rock and Adam Crowther. 
Uh, Lucy Sherwin, who is the mainframe coordinator, who's, who's our basically our one audience member. So uh, <laughs> clap from you, Lucy. Tiny little clap. There we go. Um, of course, we cannot not say thank you to the Hot House music team, John Stewart and Will. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> Have you had fun, you three? We've loved it. It's been it's great to be back. <laughs> it's, well, yeah, and hopefully you'll be back again next year. Hopefully, with a, with a real audience. Some people would be yeah. good, wouldn't they? Because you, you deserve the kind of fee, but it's difficult for performers. Exactly, I know. And we also need you to wear the suit next time. I think the, the people have heard. Yeah. So there's no excuse now, I'm afraid. Uh, the pressure's wearing, on. That's wearing a Christmas suit in April. I Christmas think suit Christmas in April. Yeah. in April. Yeah, that is going to yeah. be done. I think, okay. Um, if you'd like Adam to do that, if you could comment uh, using the well, hashtag. Actually, please I don't, yeah. please I don't, I don't, this isn't a thing. Well, what about the Easter bunny? This is, oh, this is not a thing. Are we going Adam off track a little bit? Hashtag Adam in a suit. There we go. I was going to say thank you to various people. Some people I'm not going to thank anymore now because <laughs> of what's just happened. But no, in all seriousness, huge thanks to Hot House Music. It does help to create a fantastic atmosphere for us here. And I know you at home. And when you are here in public, they will get a lot more feedback. So brilliant for those guys keeping it up uh, during these times. Um, a huge thanks to the technical team that have made this happen. As I said, it hopefully seemed relatively seamless at home apart from the stumbling from me as a presenter, <laughs> but moving from various uh, bits to, to one another. I reflected with the team here earlier that um, I've been in many events, and I'm sure many of you have, where the presenters, um, even if they make a mistake, they will find a way of blaming that on the technicians. It's something I committed to never, ever do. And if I can use this platform to also pass that on to anyone else that's attending events, technicians do an incredible job and very often do not get thanked. They just get blamed when things go wrong. So huge thanks to Lindley Productions, who are brilliant, which is Andy Lindley, Jack, Mark, and Grant. Woo! And I guess it's just finally to say thank you to my co-hosts, Hannah and Charlene, for tonight. Thank you for that and all your brilliant work throughout the year. It's been a pleasure. And it's never a chore. Fantastic photographer as well. Charlotte. Yes, of course. Oh, yes. CJ. Charlotte Hiding Jopling them. in the audience taking <laughs> photographs, which we'll be uh, distributing afterwards, so you can see those. Some behind-the-scenes shots. Ooh, what happened before we got here? Um, and I, I, Yeah, I, I think it's also to say thank you to all of you for signing up, for coming to this event virtually. It's always weird. There you are. I can see you Woo! on screen. Thank you to all of you <laughs> for attending. Our work means nothing without audiences, and obviously we want you to be here in the building, but the fact that you've taken the trouble to sign in online, to watch online, means a huge amount to us. So thank you so much for doing that, and thank you for being with us this evening. I think the only thing to do really now is to, well, launch next year's awards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we? just when you thought it was all over, not quite. So let's see what's going to happen for 2021. Yay. So, if all of that... Hang on, let's do it again. Woo! 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 there. If all of that, uh, all those clips from uh, the last couple of years and tonight has made you think that actually, yes, these mainframe awards are something that I should be involved with, I tell you they definitely are, um, please do go and have a look at the mainframe website. Uh, after this is all finished, um, the lovely WDA who are helping us with our uh, website are there pushing buttons frantically as we speak and putting the application form for the 2021 awards live. Um, I like to think we could muster some sort of prize for the person who gets their, the first application Indeed, in. Yeah. So it will be open tonight, gang. So, you know, and get you on have until January as well. So you've got plenty of time, you know, if you're finding a quiet moment of Christmas, the new year, yeah. get an application or straight away. <laughs>
uh, you need to fill your application in. It's very simple. Uh, we try and make it as easy as possible. Normally, we ask for about 500 words um, and some supporting evidence um, for your particular category. We always try and make sure that the categories are as inclusive as possible. So you won't see something sector specific. The idea is that they're broad. There's something in there for everyone. So you will find a category um, to highlight your amazing uh, business um, and, yeah. and yourself. And it's all free. And you could be winning one of these. Yeah, these are great as well. Yeah, absolutely. You could have one of these beauties on your mantelpiece next year. So um, please do go and have a look. Indeed. Well, that's it. We're done. Finished. Yeah. Ended. Um, but surely, as with all great ceremonies, you should end with a song. Can we dance? Hot House. Can we dance as well? We not yeah, dance. dance. Like Feel free, yeah. <laughs> we, we can dance, yes. Yeah. Can we dance? Can we? <laughs>